Hey folks, uh, I was just changing my strings here and I thought this might be a good opportunity for me to go over uh, the Luthier's Knot. So um, I, I tried looking into this a while ago and I really couldn't find any good information on it. So, um, you know, what uh, good YouTube banjo, you know, guitar guy uh, doesn't have his own changing strings video. So this is not a general how to change your strings video. This is just focusing specifically on Luthier's Knot. So. Um, I already have my low D on. Um, I'm going to try to get this into focus so you can see it. Um, but the luthier is not really... I don't know how well I can do this. The luthier's not will pin the string against the peg. So really what you're doing is you have, you know, the peg... You're going to pass the string through the peg and you know how obviously you know when we change strings we come up and around the opposite direction you know and then you you twist them so with the luthier's knot the first passing you do is actually around this way so i'm going to take off um my my g here Oh, this is no wonder it's not working. I'm not using the right uh, string winder. I need my bigger one. Um, so I will say that I've been playing stringed instruments since I was like 10 years old, nine years old, something like that. And uh, I've been changing my own strings for a really, really long time. And I, you know, I know the luthier's knot thing is kind of, controversial some folks think it's a bunch of bs some people swear by it i am in the category of people that uh swears by it so i uh was just really getting frustrated with uh, some you know issues with you know string slipping stuff like that and so i i looked into doing a luthier's knot i'd never really done it before and I wholeheartedly, you know, it's not that I just believe it's made a difference. I've seen a difference. So I do it on all of my instruments now that are all of my stringed instruments. So really, you know, if you change your own strings, you are familiar with the initial setup. That doesn't really change. You know, if you have, you know, if you're a steel string player, you know, you got hooks on the end, you got buttons on the end to hook your loop on. Um, my banjo, I have to bend this loop a little bit to get the G to catch. So I am going to hook this G on here and I'm going to, you know, just sort of bring it up. Nothing out of the ordinary. I'm going to make sure I'm pulling it. I got some tension here. And so I want my sound hole. I'm not my sound hole. I'm sorry. as guitar term. I want my peg, the holes to be facing up and down. So... I've got this kind of pinned here so it doesn't budge a whole lot. I'm going through and I'm just going to hold this kind of tight for a second. So you want to give yourself some slack. Everybody's got different opinions about slack. For me, I usually, for the, the D, I usually do about, take, I take this space and then I give it about a third off. Um, so if I were to do that with this, yeah, so I'd give myself about this much slack. I'm not... Super concerned about how much slack is going in here. It's not a big deal, uh, you know, down to like a centimeter, but, you know, roundabout. So I've given myself some slack. Now my string has come off the peg, which is not a big deal. Um, but so now I can, I've kind of got this pinned here. I am, now you would think, okay, if I start winding, I want, you know, this to come around this way. With the luthier's knot, you want to come around the opposite direction first. And then I'm going to take this end and it's going to go under that string. It's kind of a pain in the butt to do and I'm doing it backwards, so bear with me. So now I have these two here. You just want to make sure that this is pulled tight. You can kink it if you want, um, but you just want it to be tight against that peg, okay? So now I'm gonna give this guy a few cranks here. I'm gonna make sure again that this is looking good. I think I pulled my slack through, so give me one second. I 
I did pull my slack through, but that's all right. We'll just go with it. So now as I'm spinning this peg, pull it tight. I'm going to let go of this part now. Pulling this tight, it's pinning that under pass I did against the peg. And you want each subsequent turn to go, obviously the coil will still go down. So I've got this all right here. I'm going to go back down and rehook this before I run out of room. Okay. I'm going to give this a few more. Good cranks. Each out. Got myself on my other string. Pass. Okay, getting tight. Looks good. Whoop. Slipped a little bit, but caught. So, now you should be able to see if I turn it this way. Where's the kink? Pretty much dead on the middle. I'm trying to get this thing to focus. Tell you what, I'm just going to grab my phone and show you. Trying to not turn it off. I actually have done that before while doing lessons and stuff. So, you're looking here now. At this kinked, there's a little loop here to where it popped up, but you know, of course, I'm doing it backwards in a camera. And then here you can see. this one okay that's a really good shot of it so ideally that's what you want it to look like so again i went i came up i pushed it through the hole i measured my slack out and then i gave it a pass here and under this pulled it up and kinked it and then as i tightened it these subsequent passings pinned this against the sound or the peg. So, you know, it's like I said, I've had people, you know, will get all fired up about, you know, whether or not Luthier's knot is actually, um, you know, does anything. I, I truly believe it does. I think there's a lot of it's like it makes sense. You think about it; it's coiled around and it's it's pinned back. It's almost like you're it, you're tying a knot off. So, I know it, it works well for uh, you know nylon strings and gut strings and all everything in between. Um, but you know it it works well with steel strings. So give it a shot. Let me know what you think.